Find anything? Not in this fog. Sir, driftwood could easily be mistaken for a sea monster. Perhaps that is what the captain saw. But this driftwood apparently circled the ferry on three separate days. Keep looking. Unless it comes right up to the boat and knocks, I don't think... Would someone care to answer that? Ice? But it's not even winter. Over there. Iceberg! Ah! and warm weather icebergs dad something moved on top you certain son kind of look like a person no <laughs> excellent aim sir though i am puzzled as to what was gained by throwing away your comm unit if someone is stranded on that hunk of glacier Danny and Blades can track the signal right to them. We must be getting close. Speaking of close, how about we fly at a higher altitude? Higher? Alert the media. Well, it's a known fact that sea monsters like to pull low-flying helicopters right out of the air. Did you just make that up? It could happen. Iceberg, dead ahead. Here's Dad's comm link. Well, if anyone was here, they're gone now. That? Hmm. Blades, the de-icing foam. Question? If no one is here, why are we? Uh, where's your spirit of adventure, Blades? I keep it back at the firehouse. It's some sort of control panel. Cody didn't really just push that. Ah! Oh. Blades, are you okay? Say something. No more pushing random buttons. Sorry. What kind of iceberg is this? It's not an iceberg. It's a ship covered in ice. Let's look around. Excuse me, but exploring ghost ships requires the whole rescue team. And the Navy. And I'd give Optimus a call, too. Huh. Here's the ship's log. It says we're on the SS Isolde. Cody, call this into Dad. I'll search for any passengers. The Isolde? And it doesn't look like anyone's been inside here for years. Probably because that freighter was lost in 1966. You know something about it, Dad? The Isolde was used to transport experimental tech to Griffin Rock. 
So what happened? The captain and crew had to abandon ship after certain cargo became unstable. It says here the captain was Zachary Burns. <gasps> Great Grandpa? Yep. He never talked about it. But whatever happened on board really spooked him. So finish the search and hightail it off of there. Is this your great-grandfather, Cody? I'm not sure. I've never seen a picture of him. But if it is, I bet my dad would love to have this. He and his grandpa were really close. <laughs> hey, guys. Didn't find anyone on board, but... Want to bet that's what's causing the deep freeze? Because someone left the power switch on? You'll be all right. <sighs> no more pushing random toggle switches either. Can you fly? Try and stop me. Cody, let's move it. According to Doc Green, lab records from 1966 show most of the Isolde's cargo was top secret. Except for this. The Sub-Zero Expander. Ah, ah. Divert your eyes, Blades. Think warm thoughts. It says here it was intended to restore melting polar caps by generating fresh ice. <laughs> Too bad their Sub-Zero doohickey was a foul ball. Thing's obviously a hazard. You can't just leave something like that drifting around where people might run into it again. I, I say, say we, we blow, blow it up. It up. Huh? Figures it would take explosives to make you two agree. But we can't destroy Great Grandpa's ship. And not recovering that old tech would be a missed opportunity. As much as saving the Isolde would mean to me, I'm with the bomb squad on this one. We leave in five. We're going back out there? Some of us. Sorry, son. You've had enough thrills and chills for one day. Rescue bots, roll to the rescue! Captain's Log, May 25th, 1966. Rough seas. First mate reports a crate is broken open. As a result, the device inside has activated, awaiting instructions from the Griffin Rock Lab. Power up and energize. Team. Then boom goes the dynamite. Last. We have barely two minutes. Blades. It might be prudent to move everyone behind us, sir. Wait! That's no shark! Chief Bad! 
Burns. You and your ham-fisted robots are trespassing. Dr. Morocco! That's two mysteries solved. The sea monster and the iceberg man. You have a lot of nerve showing up here, Morocco. There's still a warrant out for your arrest. Pish posh. The mayor and I patched things up as soon as I returned his missing schooner. What did you mean by we're trespassing? Finders keepers. <laughs> like that'll hold up at court. Unfortunately, it will. Naval salvage laws say that whoever finds an abandoned ship gets to claim it and its cargo. Signed by your mayor this very morning. The SS is sold day, and everything on board belongs to yours truly. I'm calling the mayor now, Dad. Dr. Morocco, some of that cargo is really unstable. Seriously, do you not see the ice? Such concern does warm the heart. That said, I demand that you cease interfering with my salvage operation. Dad, the mayor confirmed it. The Isolde belongs to Dr. Morocco. All right, team. We've done all we can here. Unbelievable. Log entry. We've received instructions from the Griffin Rock Lab to abandon ship. Dad, listen to Captain Burns' final log entry. Any attempt to move the damaged Sub Zero expander will likely cause it to explode <gasps> and flash freeze everything within five miles. That's why Great Grandpa never went back for it. Morocco putting only himself in danger is one thing. Cody, check for any other craft in the area. <laughs> Welcome to Griffin Rock. Doctor, you need to evacuate now! <sighs> Chief Burns, I've grown wary of this debate. Your grandfather's ship is now mine. The expander is going ballistic. Firebot, assist Dr. Morocco into his submarine. As commanded. <laughs> I'll have you up on charges, do you hear? That man is not humankind's greatest example. <sighs> I don't think we're gonna make it out of range in time. Vehicle modes, now! Chase, I am fine, sir, except for the p -p parts which are immobile. Kate, Danny, Graham, do you read? Come on, he wave, open up. Can't. Frozen. Solid. I, 
I, I th think I can move us. No, don't. We moved. Try opening your canopy. Still stuck. Wait. No. Still stuck. Dad, are you all right? Anybody? Cody, you are a site for cold optics. Just give it a second to work, Chase. Me next. Cade's overstayed his welcome. Nice work, Cody. Oh, you're a lifesaver. I'd have busted out of there sooner or later. Did the town get hit? It's only icy up to the shoreline. Looks like you got the worst of it right here. Danny? Check the Sub-Zero Expander while we help Dr. Morocco. That machine has frozen its last bot. When I'm warmer, I'll jump for joy. Now look who abandoned ship. Well, that means he's all right. So what now? Drive home or wait for the ice to melt? Hmm, doesn't look very thick. Probably already melting, at least at the outer edges. Melting? But I saw four cars from the ferry driving across the ice back to town. Can you get there in time? We're on it. Rescue bots, roll to the rescue. from the ice field. Everyone, get to the boat. safe now. Drive carefully, avoid ice. Was that? Yes. 
Dr. Morocco actually came to our rescue. I'm sure he thinks that makes up for everything else he's done. Still, I never would have guessed that man had a grateful bone in his body. A grateful bone? Where exactly on a human is that located? Probably next to the funny bone we've heard about. The fairy's back, but no sign of the Isolde. Do you think Morocco took her? Well, chances are. Let's just hope any tech he got away with is too old to be useful. What is it, son? The portrait that was hanging in the Isolde's cargo hold. Grandpa Zachary. I haven't looked into that face for a long, long time. Hmm. Maybe there's hope for Dr. Morocco yet. Oh my. Just what the doctor ordered. <laughs> 